Hey, I'm Lorna from Thread and Yarn. Um, I've been part of the sewing and knitting Instagram community now for a few years and I wanted to start up a YouTube channel to share some more of my makes and the process with you. Um, and I thought I'd start by introducing myself and showing you some of my favourite makes so you can sort of see the sort of stuff that I'm making, the kind of aesthetic I like and um, I also thought it'd be useful to do a, do a bit of a evaluation of the things that I actually find myself reaching for that I've made, um, things I like about them, things I'm not so keen on. Um, I've definitely noticed over the last few years that um, the stuff that I was making at the beginning I was really keen to um, just experiment with sewing. I didn't really know what kind of fabrics I liked, what sort of patterns I was into. I think I was sort of following more trends and seeing what other people made and, and having a go at that rather than thinking about what I actually wear, um, what suits my life and uh, what sort of things um, make me feel good. Um, and I'm just starting to get a handle on that um, and there's some key pieces I want to show you that I really love, that I wear all the time. Um, yeah, and I guess I'll, I'll start off with that. I'll start off with uh, this first one on the left here. This is a Merchant and Mills uh, Otterline jacket. This was one of the first jackets that I'd made. Um, I made it in one of the Merchant and Mills own um, twills in the colour, I think it's tobacco. Um, it's, I'm really happy with how, it, how it's turned out. It's a perfect fabric weight for the jacket. It's a nice sort of, I call it a mid-season jacket. I wear it a lot in the um, autumn and sort of spring before it gets too cold or too warm. Um, and it's just the right kind of weight to layer up over stuff. You'll see a lot of this shade of brown in all of my stuff and I'm not that super imaginative in my colour palette, I'm afraid. Um, but I'm, I'm really happy with how I made it. I did some, some top stitching on it and chose some matching buttons. And this is about the point when I got my overlocker um, before I'd been doing a lot of zigzag seams, which works fine. But um, I do think the overlocker edge gives it a more professional uh, finish. Um, so yeah, really wearable, really like this. One thing I would say on this is... Um, I had to do a bit of a bodge, <laughs> one of the sort of, sort of sneaky bodges um, on the sleeve here, as you can see on the inside, it was just too thick for me to roll up and hem to the sort of depth that I wanted. Um, I should have sort of splayed the, the sleeve out when I cut it. Um, so to, in order to get a smooth sort of hem all the way around the, the outside, I had to do, cut a little slit and I did need to hand sew <laughs> this to neaten it up, but I never got around to it. Um, I always think there's something that's not entirely finished on all of my makes. <laughs> but I love it, wear it all the time. This is the new Craft House Everyday um, Waistcoat. I made it reversible uh, with this check linen on the inside and then this cotton floral print. Um, I love it, I wear it a lot. I love wearing tank tops and, and vests, I think they're great, like the core warmers when you don't want to wear something really chunky. Um, and I like that there's got a plain side and a more patterned side depending on what I feel like and what I'm going to wear it with. And I finished it with just one um, bias tie. This next one is the Blooms Rubel by um, Nina Lee London. This is made in gorgeous Rupert linen by Metro Mills. This top when I made it did so well on my Instagram. Um, it was really popular um, and I can see why. Like I love the ruffles, the, the sort of contrast between the uh, check fabric and the sort of uh, fussiness of the collar I really really love one of my sort of favorite mustardy olive colors as well but um, I love it I wish I wore it more but I just can't be bothered to do these back buttons all the time um, I actually struggle to do them up by myself as well so it means that I don't put it on as much as I should plus um, this I made it quite early in my sewing journey and there's bits that like I just wouldn't do it in this way now. I wouldn't leave it as it is. You can see that I kind of ran out of fabric for the collar on the inside. So why you can't tell this on my nice Instagram post, it's got exposed inter interfacing on the inside. Um, and it's just the guts of it, I'm not super happy with. Um, that's definitely something I've learned is I've done more sewing, is to spend time on the insides as much as you do on the outsides and create a really sort of well-made, lovely garment. But I do love this. I, I might come back to it um, and sort of finish off the insides a bit more nicely so that it sort of feels as good on the inside as it looks as pretty as it does on the outside. Next up is 
one of uh, Helen's closet patterns, um, the Gilbert shirt, really popular shirt, I can see why. Um, I love this snake, I wear it often. I did originally uh, think of it as like a summery top, but I always wear it under a cardi um, in the winter as well. It's just such a good wearable pattern. Um, the only thing I would say is I did find the sort of sleeve arm opening a bit tight um, on my underarm and I like to feel like I've got good range of, of movement. Um, and I get a bit sweatier I think if I've got tight uh, sleeves around my armpits. Um, so I like to have that feeling nice and comfy. So I did, um, I made one before this and on this one I did drop it down, um, make it a couple of centimetres bigger and it's much more comfortable. Uh, I also love this print, it's from a cloth house in London. Um, not normally one for fussing over pattern matching but with this one I thought it's definitely worth it. My most worn make ever, um, to the point of maybe being a bit gross, is <laughs> this truss cardigan. Um, it's a pattern by Brooklyn Tweed. It's a really simple grey cardigan in their Brooklyn Tweed um, shelter yarn. Um, really basic, I knitted it right before lockdown and then just basically didn't wear anything else. Um, it's so wearable, it's really cosy, really warm, really simple pattern except it's got this really nice detail here on the side. Um, it wasn't particularly challenging but just quite effective I think. Um, I wear this most days. And a new make that I quite in love with is these um, MM Harleen dungarees. I've had this on my to make list for a couple of years and I think I've had the fabric for about that time as well. Um, and I kind of press off making it thinking that so much top stitching I was going to struggle, um, it was going to be too technical. But they're really, I mean time consuming but um, not particularly challenging to make in terms of the construction um, as long as you take your time. Um, I'm going to do a video soon on top stitching and how to get it really neat. And I think that's what makes this either look good or not good. Um, and there's just a couple of things you can do to adjust your machine and things like that to get it looking really more professional. Um, and I did some contrasting top stitching here as well, which if you can see is orange against this sort of blue and white railroad denim. These are just really wearable. They're quite sort of baggy around the hips, but I quite like that to be honest. Um, I don't want everything to be really skin tight anymore. Um, and I've got a sort of contrasting floral um, waist and pocket lining um, just using up some scraps but quite like the contrast so I'm wearing these a lot since I made them um, and my most recent make actually are these um, Anna Allen Helene jeans in this um, brown corduroy to see a theme I quite like quite like my autumn colours um, and again I tried really hard to get my top stitching neat and I'm quite happy with the results um, I'll, I'll go through this a bit more um, in my top stitching video, um, but it does make a massive difference to how it looks. I like the fit of these a lot. Um, I did have to let them out on the hips a bit as I was making them. They've got their really classic um, traditional jean shape, which I really like. One thing I would do next time is sort of lengthen this area a little bit to make it a bit more comfortable. Um, that's it really. I, I often find that Anna Allen's patterns fit me really well. So something else that I get a lot of use out of is this sort of corduroy tote bag slash sack um, that, so I bought a remnant, um, it was just half metre of this quite thick whale um, olive green corduroy online. Um, made a cushion with it for the living room and then with the rest of it, um, yeah, I made this bag. It's just self-drafted, made from rectangles, um, really easy, useful bag. It's usually full of knitting and threads and um, scissors and needles and hazards like that. Um, but yeah, really easy. Um, I'm going to do something soon to show you how to make a simple tote bag. Nice sort of beginner accessible project. I lined the pockets with some leftover cotton that I had. Um, yeah, I wear a lot. I've made some of these for gifts as well. Nice and slouchy. Yeah. And this is probably my favourite summer dress. This gorgeous linens from Merchant Mills. Um, it's a kind of pinky lilac with a green uh, small check. It's the uh, Zero Waste Gather Dress by the Peter Hansen. I was unsure about this pattern when I first saw them and everyone else. I was like, is it a bit faddy? Will that shape 
really look good on me will I always like that shape um will it be a bit too loose but um I did take the bodice in by about three inches it sounds like a lot but it's a you know it's quite a big pattern um on both sides uh, so it's still quite oversized but just having that slight change on the bodice um I think just makes a difference it, it made me feel less swamped like I was still wearing a loose relaxed dress um but I didn't feel totally yeah swamped and dwarfed by this um by this dress it also meant I could fit it into the amount of fabric I had which is the great thing about that pattern it is quite adjustable um, and instead of it being a pattern that you draw around and cut out you work it out based on how much fabric you have um which is great um and I made it just a bit more affordable and I managed to use a beautiful linen for it um but I get a lot of wear out of this I often wear it with a jumper as well in winter so quite like making use of my summer stuff all year round um and yeah it's part of the sort of colour scheme that I'm going for sort of soft warm autumn colours um so that my wardrobe is quite interchangeable and quite mixable um with a couple of different statement pieces but everything's sort of I'm hoping I'll be doing a job and working in my wardrobe rather than just filling it up with with sort of stuff that I see that I like on other people but wouldn't actually wear myself that's the goal anyway <laughs> sometimes I still get carried away like everyone um yeah that's a great one and then this um is the uh hattie dress um it's got gorgeous neck darts that I think make an otherwise quite simple dress really special um nice little button closure on the neck here this is in simply um, fabrics from Brixton's cotton really affordable gorgeous cotton quite a heavyweight cotton but but soft and has a nice drape um I wear this a lot in autumn and winter with uh, like woolly tights and boots and a jumper quite a lot of that grey truss cardigan <laughs> um I narrowed the skirt a bit so that it felt quite like a, it is loose around the waist there's no gathering there's no sort of bringing in of the waist here but it, it still falls down quite straight and I quite like that look with chunky black boots in the winter um, and I really like this navy and sort of olivey brown check I get a lot of use out of this um, yeah so I think those are my top worn makes I think it's taken me years to get to the point where I'm actually sort of confident enough to think um you know what I actually want to be wearing and 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 get really comfortable in my own style but that definitely takes some practice of making things that aren't quite right I mean it's all part of the journey really um, and I'm still you know making things now and I think oh I'm not so sure about that um, it's never sort of done it's never perfect but I'm starting to really enjoy the process of making really well-made garments I'm hoping will last me for ages and that I can mix and match um, with each other um, so that everything's sort of doing a job in my wardrobe and this is definitely one of them <laughs> and then lastly is what I'm wearing now so as much as I love to sew I think um, knitting is, is was my first love um, in terms of crafting I'm always knitting um, I feel bereft if I go on a car journey without it with me um, and this I did on a couple of shifts a few winters ago um, it's the Holiday Slipover by Petite Knit, really chunky vest, um, again in olive green, not a surprise, uh, but it's really, really wearable, um, really sort of nice core warmer. It's starting to bobble a bit, it's the Rowan Big Wool I think that I used to make this, um, but I do wear it quite a lot. There's things I do now that I would improve around the neckline, um, so it's not the neatest thing. But I still love it anyway, and I wear it quite a lot, um, and it brings me joy. So I think that's pretty good going. But I, yeah, I hope you enjoyed getting a little bit of a um, view into my closet and some of my favourite makes. Um, yeah, if you like this video, I'd love it if you hit the subscribe button. Um, it really helps, especially as I'm just getting started out, and I'd like to, yeah, get to, um, a conversation going with more of you. Um, so yeah, look out for my next videos. I'm definitely going to do one on um, how to do really neat top stitching and a couple of others on, on some fitting, common fitting machines as well. So hopefully see you there.